welcome to the Marina Skewer podcast. My name's Marina, I'm a dyer and knitwear designer based in Wiltshire in the southwest of England. And this podcast is about my knitting and other craft projects. And today I'm going to be showing you some of the things I'm making. I don't have any finished objects recently. Uh, and I'm also going to show you some of the fibre that I've been dyeing up because I've been doing a lot of that. Um, so I'll start with what I'm wearing. This is my Galdor cardigan, which I released a couple of years ago, maybe a bit more than that now. Um, it's got half length sleeves, nice wide ones. It's an open cardigan, comes to a sort of hip level there. And as the weather begins to get a little bit warmer, it's one of my most warm things because it's so easy to just chuck on over other things it's great for layering and you don't have to worry about buttons or anything and because it's got nice deep armholes and sleeves uh, it layers up really well you can chuck loads of stuff underneath it and it's lots of fun and it's got an interesting construction with a fair bit of steaking if you want to give that a go uh, so the pattern's available in my Ravelry shop and on my website both of which will be linked below um, so I'm trying to work out what order to show you things in because it's been a longer than usual since last I filmed because everything is chaos at the moment. Um, we're having extensive building work done on our house and that's just taking up a lot of time and making life just quite difficult. Uh, so I am scraping together what I can. We don't have a kitchen at the moment. Um, we've got our cooker set up at the bottom of the stairs which is currently where I'm dyeing yarn and it's just all a lot um, but I'm going to show you things because I have accumulated a fair number of things to show you since the last time we talked so I don't, I don't I'll, I'll show you a couple of cardigans I think I showed both of them in the last episode but I've made some reasonable progress on them I'll do this one first because not much has changed, it's just got longer. Uh, so this is a saddle shoulder cardigan with moss stitch details on the shoulders. Um, I've currently got the sleeves on hold and I have done probably most of the body at this point. Um, I'm doing the buttonholes on the button band as I go. So we've got vertical ribbing on the front edge. Um, got our little buttonholes. And I think I'm probably going to add one or two more buttons. Um, I'll be trying it on as I go and seeing what sort of length I'd like. And then I will be doing stuff with the sleeves, which is where more interesting things happen because this moss stitch detail that goes over the top of the shoulder will continue down the top of the arm and there'll be some twisty stuff going on which will be fun. Um, so yes the yarn is Rauma Finnel yarn and the colour I'm going to have to remind myself of because it's a number 4120. Uh, it's a really nice sort of dark heathery orangey red um, and yeah, it's, it's properly heathery. I think there's quite a lot of darker fibres in there, uh, which is really, really pretty. Um, and I think this one's going to be really nice to work on and then wear as the weather gets a bit warmer because it's a very lightweight yarn with a lot of air trapped in it. It's woolen spun. Um, and it's just really, really nice to knit with. I'm having lots of fun with it. Um, I worked on that one a fair bit over the weekend, both in the car and at um, my brother's house where we went to visit to not be in our house over the weekend. Um, and it's really nice to have quite a straightforward project to work on in the evenings when people are like chatting and having drinks and stuff, it's nice. Uh, and then, yeah, so that is some, one I'm designing. Um, pattern will be released, I mean, hopefully this year, but we'll see how things go because everything is a bit all over the place at the moment and I have lots of things that I need to catch up on and I have no idea what my release schedule looks like at the moment. But having said that, this one, 
I've made quite a lot of progress on. Um, this I've done all of the body of. Whoop. You can see there it's a reasonably long one so this will probably come to low hip. Um, I imagine we'll have like a nice amount of bum coverage there uh, which would be good for like layering when it's a bit chillier. And so this is the, going to be the scrumper cardigan which is based on my scrumper waistcoat which is out already. So the waistcoat is basically this, <laughs> um, but then it has moss stitch round the armholes and we've got nice little cable and moss stitch details down the side and up the fronts. So this hasn't been blocked yet so it's not behaving itself super well. Um, and I'm now, I've done a fair bit of maths for a slightly interesting sleeve construction. Uh, we're having set in sleeves worked in the round uh, from picked up stitches. And so we've just got the first sleeve cap here. Um, it's, it's in its very early stages. I've literally just finished the shaping on that sleeve cap and I'm ready to pick up the stitches for the other sleeve. Um, I do pretty much all of my sleeves two at a time, but with um, short row sleeve shaping, if that happens immediately after you've picked up stitches, I will usually pick up stitches for one sleeve, do short row shaping, pick up the stitches for the other sleeve and do the short row shaping and then carry on with both sleeves in the round. Um, just because that makes it easier to focus on working back and forth while you don't have to worry about the other sleeve. Um, and I did do a video the month before last on how I do sleeves two at a time. Um, because I like once you've done it a couple of times, it's really, really straightforward. But I think if you haven't done it or you're trying to work it out for the first time, it can be very easy to overcomplicate it in your head and get mixed up about where the yarn goes and how you should be picking up stitches and things. And the method also applies for working on socks or mittens or anything that you're working on in the round two at a time. Um, that video is on my Patreon and it was filmed at the request of a couple of people who just wanted to see how I do it because I've talked about it a lot. I find it um, really good both for keeping track of shaping, like if you've got a sleeve that tapers for instance and you need to work decreases at set intervals for example, um, it means that you can make sure that you decrease at exactly the same rate because you work the decreases on exactly the same round for each sleeve. Um, for things like socks, I like to do it with toe-up socks working from the inside and outside of a ball so that you can use up literally all of a ball of yarn to make a pair of socks uh, because you just keep going with the ankle up the leg until you run out of yarn. Well, until just before because you need enough to bind off, but uh, it's a way of getting as much out of your yarn as you can. Um, so yeah, that video is available to patrons and I'll include a link to that below. Um, so yes, I'm ready to start the second sleeve on this one and I didn't take this one with me over the weekend just because the picking up of stitches and working short rows and things was going to require a bit more brain than I had free. So I will hopefully pick up for this one at some point this week. And the yarn for this one is one I've talked about a lot because it's one of my very favourite yarns. It's John Arban Textiles Appledore DK. The colour is Sweet Coppin, uh, which I always have to remind myself of because it doesn't stick in my head very well. And this is the sort of colour that I wear a lot. Um, I really like, just, it's a really difficult colour to explain. It kind of sometimes looks like a dusty pink or a pinky brown. Sometimes it looks really red. Um, but it has lots of pink in it and a surprising amount of green in it and it's just really durable and hard wearing and tweedy and lovely and I really like wearing things made of it. Um, 
yeah, so those are the two cardigan projects that I've been working on for quite a while. The first one was in hibernation for a fair bit uh, because I was working on other stuff. The scrumper cardigan, so the one in the John Urban Textiles Apple door, that one will probably be going out for test knitting uh, within the next few weeks, hopefully. Um, I'd like to give it a decent test knit period and yeah I need to sort out what I'm doing with the pattern release and everything but that one will be happening fairly quickly because I would like to have the pattern available at the John Arban Textiles Mill Open Weekend uh, where I will be selling my patterns and also giving a talk which I think I probably mentioned last time uh, so apologies if I did but I'm going to be giving a talk on slow crafting with local materials, which is something that I really love. Um, so yes, if you do want to consider test knitting that one or want to hear when it's open for test knits, um, if you go on my website, there is a link in the footer to test knit signups where you can join a mailing list. And whenever I open a test knit, you can, it'll then give you the link to apply and that's how I run those. I shall show, yeah, I'll show you this one next because it's fun. This is the first of two publications I'm going to show you. Um, and I'm very excited about this one. This is 52 Weeks of Accessories by Liner Publishing. I realize it came out quite a while ago now, but I didn't have my copy last time I filmed. Um, and I'm really, really pleased to have a pattern in it. So I have designed these fun mittens. They've got a nice little twisty pattern on them. They're all in ribbing with traveling stitches. Um, and they're kind of, they're a bit sort of pointy, which I like. They feel kind of impy. Um, and they're just really fun to knit. So I think they're really cute. Um, so the insides of the hands are just plain ribbing for most of the hand, but then the backs of the hands have this sort of twisty section. So tortillis is the Latin for twisted. And yeah, they're really cute. And there are loads and loads of lovely patterns in here. I didn't mention the yarn. The yarn is my own Mendip DK uh, in the colour Beach on the Sunny base, um, which I really love as a, war a warm brown that's quite light and doesn't, like brown can be really quite neutral and sometimes a bit dull, but it's, it's a very sort of rusty, kind of comforting coppery brown, which I really enjoy. Um, named after copper beaches. So yes, there are lots and lots of lovely patterns in this book. The cover is a beautiful pair of mittens by Ely Skandier. Um I should have actually found the page that I'm on for you. Let's just do that quickly. Mittens. There we go. And the photography is completely beautiful. Um, as sort of as you might expect from a liner publication if you've seen them before. Um, I think they look really lovely in there. And I've been I've been sending su submissions to liner for a very, very long time, and it's quite nice to have finally made it. Um, I'm pleased with those ones. Um, the book is available in lots of places that sell knitting books. Um, so next up I'm going to talk about the Out of the Dark Make Along, which was my make along that's been running from the 1st of January until a few days ago. Uh, the make along has now finished and I have drawn the prizes and I thought I'd just give a quick look at the prizes before I send them off because they're really lovely and ideally I would have done this before the make-along was finished, but again, life has been chaos. 
Um, but it has been so, so lovely. Like, I run the make-along. It's called the Out of the Dark make-along because winter is generally grey and dark and a bit rubbish in England. And I could do with something to cheer me up. And so seeing things that people have made with my yarn and patterns and fibre really does cheer me up because often I, you know, people buy, whether it's yarn or patterns or whatever from me, and then I don't know what they go on to become. I don't know if like that pattern just sits in someone's library or if the yarn goes on a shelf. Um, but it's really, really nice to see what people are actually making and it's just been really, really nice. And especially going through and picking the prizes, like made a little spreadsheet so I can list everyone and make sure that I've got everyone accounted for before they get drawn. And just going through and seeing what everyone's been making is just, it's been so, so lovely. Um, so thank you to everyone who has participated. You have made me happier and I hope that in some way it's made you happier. Um, and for the prizes, we have... Do, do, do. Seven skeins of Rowan Pebble Island that is going to Carola. Um, she has made quite a few beautiful colour work projects um, using my pattern. So I think she made a Wayard hat and a uh, Lapidarium. I think the Lapidarium was a bit of a spur of the moment cast on, but it turned out so, so pretty. Um, and yeah it's really really nice to see those and her yarn choices were just perfect um and then we've got a copy of making stories magazine um which some of you might know i've been a fan of for a really really long time and for the first time ever i am stocking this on my website i've still got a small number of copies available and this one has let's actually find it because i do not have the sample to show you once again should have found the page with my stuff on it before starting. Um, so Wellana is a cardigan that is mostly stuck in it. It's a raglan cardigan what top down and it's got flary sleeves like the sleeves are dramatic. Um, it's, they, they are very whimsical and I love them. Um, and they have cables going down the sleeves and the back of the cardigan. And the cable section like gets wider as it goes down. So it kind of, I don't know, it's got a very flowy vibe about it. And I really, really enjoy it. And it's got compound raglan shaping and I love it. I can't remember if I talked about this pattern last time. But anyway, I actually have a copy of the magazine to show you. And it is in my shop. And this copy is going to Laura. I think she's LC Knits on Instagram. Um, because she has started, within the last few months, she started spinning and has spun up a lot of skewer blend. I think she's going to make a night shift shawl um and she she's just come along so quickly and amazingly with her spinning and it's really lovely to see all the colors of yarn she's spun up um and it's really really nice then the final prize this one i i did things slightly differently and i did a specific prize draw for people who had done spinning um because the spinning fiber is something i've started I've been doing bits and pieces of over the last couple of years, but I've started doing it in a bit of a bigger way recently, and I'm going to be showing you some of that quite soon. Um, and so I, it's been really, really nice to see more people picking up spinning. And so this one is a lovely British breed selection box from Wing and Wool Work. Um, and it's, it's such a generous prize. It's really, really lovely. It's got beautiful range of uh, different British breeds. So we've got, let's see if I can do this off the top of my head, Massam, Shetland, Moritz Shetland, um, 
Herdwick, which I've worked with a tiny bit of and is actually loads of fun. It's got lots of Kemp in it, but it's really enjoyable. Um, this one is Black Welsh Mountain, which is lovely. Oatmeal Blue Face Leicester. This one I believe is Swaledale. And this is Shetland Humbug, so it's a couple of different colours of Shetland um, processed together. And this box is going to Naomi, who is Knits and Other Bits on Instagram. Um, she spun up uh, one of my previously dyed skeins, uh, braids of Skewer Blend, which I'll talk about in a minute. And during the course of the make along, she spun up the yarn and then knitted a frost beam shawl from it. And it was just completely beautiful. And she made lots of beautiful reels of the process of spinning the yarn. And it, it was just really enjoyable. Every time one of her posts came up, it just made me really happy. Um, and her finished shawl is lovely. And it's a really, really nice way to show off the color changes in the yarn. And so that box will be going to her. Um, so yes, that's, those are the prizes. Um, I've had lots of fun with the make along and again, thank you to everyone who entered. Uh, and while we are on wing and wool work, I went up to visit them a couple of weeks ago, about two weeks ago. And because they've just moved premises. So they were previously up in Yorkshire, which is quite a long way from me. They've moved to Gloucestershire, which is not far at all from me. So they are about an hour and 15 minutes drive from where I live, which isn't bad at all. And so I needed to go up and pick up an order from, well, I had placed an order with them for my skewer blend and they invited me rather than having it posted to go up and collect it which I took them up on. I hadn't realised that I was going to be their very first visitor at the new premises. Um, I don't think they've got it open to the public yet, but I think they will be doing that. And while I was there, they asked if I wanted to see the gill box, which is the piece of machinery that my skewer blend is made up on. So they have a custom blending service where they have a massive range of both uh, naturally coloured, undyed, uh, breed specific wools. So this is a small selection of them. Um, they also have lots and lots and lots of dyed merino and Corydale and you can have those blended up. You can have I think up to six colours blended of your choice. Um, you just do it on the website and it's great. And they asked if I wanted to see how that works when I was there. So I picked a few different breeds, fewer than I did for my skewer blend, which again, I'll talk about properly in a second. Um, and we, we made another little custom blend. And I haven't spun any of this yet because I haven't had time. And I, so I, I can't tell you how it spins up yet, but I will be doing something about that quite soon. And we'll see if um, this is one that we make available to people. Um, and so I wanted to go for something a little bit lighter than the skewer blend. And so this is a blend of Dorset Horn and Suffolk. So the Suffolk is the darker sort of warm gray you can see in there. The Dorset Horn is white and it's the rest is Cotswold. So Cotswold is the local sheep to where they are now up in Gloucestershire. Um, Dorset Horn is uh, fairly local to me. And I, I said Suffolk, I don't mean Suffolk at all. I mean Shropshire, because Suffolk doesn't make sense. It's the wrong side of the country. I wanted to go for sort of Western England breeds. So Shropshire is the other one that's in here. And also Suffolk's are white. So it doesn't make sense for it to be coloured. So it's just this really nice, calming, sort of, it'll come out as a very light grey. I mean, if I sort of twist some up, don't know how well this will come out, but it'll come out as a fairly light grey. And I think that'll be really pretty. Um, 
So yeah, I've got a big bag of that to play with. And we'll see what comes of that. I need to do a little sample spin uh, and see how it spins up, whether it sort of matches the qualities I'm expecting of the component breeds that's gone into it, and then I'll decide what to make with it because I I like to sort of let the yarn decide what I'm going to make from it. Like I, I strongly believe in using not necessarily the correct yarn for a project, but I believe in using appropriate yarn for a project. So one that has the characteristics that work well with something you want in the garment or accessory or whatever it is. Um, yeah. So while I was there, I also picked up uh, a large quantity of my skewer blend, which is a blend I designed quite a few months ago now, which has Dorset Horn, Black Jacobs, uh, Manx Lochten, Grey Cheviot, and Teeswater in it. Um, didn't have to think too much, but five breeds all at once. And so I have done a few updates where I've dyed uh, the fibre, and I've been working on a big one. <laughs> so this one, these will be coming out this week. Um, I'm not 100% sure what day this video is going to go out, but it will come out shortly before patrons get access to these colours, uh, because my Patreon subscribers get access to shop updates 24 hours before they go out to my newsletter subscribers, and then anyone can get them, um, but because they've tended to sell somewhat quickly, um, it's a way of sort of managing shop traffic and things. Uh, so I'm quickly going to run through the slightly large quantity of colours I've been dyeing. Um, any that don't sell uh, in this update I'll be taking with me to Wonderwool, um, where I'm exhibiting at the end of April. So if you're coming to Wonderwall, I will 100% have fibre with me. It won't necessarily be these ones, it depends how they sell. Um, but I will be specifically dyeing up some colours for Wonderwall. Um, I, in the last video, had talked about the colours that I was taking with me to Unravel, with the intention of them then going online afterwards. None of them came home with me from Unravel because they were rather popular. Um, so I'm making sure that before I go to Wonderwall, uh, people who were disappointed then are able to get some. So I'm quickly going to run through the colours. There are 13, I believe. So I haven't named any of these. The first one is so sludgy. It's unbelievably sludgy. It's mostly just brown. Um, I'm not quite sure why I've started with this one, because I think most people will think it's one of the less exciting ones. But I really love it. It's so moody. It's got some good like russety browns in it. It's got some lighter, more greeny bits. There's so much depth to it. And also it'll just be super wearable if you're into not loud colors and it'll quite have quite subtle shifts in colors. Um, so I'm really, really keen on this one. It would also work quite well if you're spinning for like color work, it would work well as a background project in which some of the other colors could sort of show up a bit better. Um, so that one is one of my favourites, even though it's it's big on the sludge. Um, next is a kind of... it's quite an understated one. It's just a fairly rusty kind of terracotta brown. Um, it's got nice warm ready bits, um, but it's fairly neutral. And there are some nice bits where the natural colour of the fibre shows through. So naturally the skewer blend, um, it has a spectrum of naturally coloured fibres from white down through grey and brown to black. Um, and overall comes off as a sort of mm, dark warm grey. Um, I think these two work really nicely together. If you're into the sort of warm understated colours. Um, then this one, we've got like 
little bits of kind of burgundy purple and then more yellowy orangey bits and then again quite big chunks of the natural colour showing through so we've got some fairly high contrast in that one then this one is super fun very pleased with how this came out uh, so it's mostly sort of subtle variations on dark purple but then with some very warm like orangey yellow sections a tiny bit at the end there as well um, really like this one it's not necessary I'm not sure I could spin it up to make it be my colour uh, but I don't generally go for purples if they've got enough red in them then maybe but I think that one's really nice um, this one whoops we've got lots of pinky orange night really nice orange sections in here and then more orange over here but some like nice pinky bits in the middle and again big chunks of the natural color showing through I'm trying to dye most of these to allow some of the natural color to show through just because I think it's really pretty on its own um, and also it means that they're all kind of cohesive in some way and so if you like combo spins or if you want to use the same ones uh, so multiple ones in the same project they'll work really really nicely together um, and just take off that bit of fluff I'll show you what's happening there in a second um, really nice warm one there I like that one then this one yeah lots and lots of the natural grey in this one but then like little bits of like areas of yellow and then some like purpley bits and reddy bits and then we get to some blue down here and a bit more yellow it's just kind of about half grey but then with some nice little colour surprises in there this one I really like we've got pink and green which seems to be a colour combination I'm visiting a lot at the moment so we've got quite dark reddish pinks and then a lovely olive green it's sort of quite moody at this end but then it gets towards slightly lighter colours this end there's a bit less of the natural colour showing through on this one um, really like it though this is the only one I've named actually this one's sprig because it's so springy it's like fresh leaf buds and shoots and so it's mostly sort of warm yellow but with some olivey green it's actually quite a pesto-y colour <laughs> um, no it's a tiny bit more yellow than that but yeah it's quite low contrast and that'll be really nice spun up It'll be fairly like not strong sort of color banding or striping or whatever this one's really really fun thoroughly enjoy this one it reminds me of parrots um so we've got lots of teal in it but also areas of bright red and some yellowy areas and it's just really fun like this one and then some little chunks where the grey shows through as well. Now these two, the next two work quite nicely together because they're kind of like a less and more intense version of similar things. So this one's got a, a lot of the grey showing through but then some areas of like green and blue with little bits of yellow. Um, and it's kind of fairly understated but just with some areas of interest and then we've got this one which is much darker and is mostly greeny blue and some really dark areas but then I think these would ply up really nicely together um, I like combo spins I find them really fun um, so spinning up two different ones as singles and then playing them together 
at two or more you could do a three ply or a four ply um, and have some really interesting effects and I think it just keeps spinning larger quantities a bit more interesting and you can do quite fun stuff with how you place your colours. Um, then this one is mostly blues but with like some sh some shifts towards teal and shifts towards a kind of lavendery purple but it mostly comes across as a fairly understated blue and again some nice areas of the natural grey showing through there I think this one will come out as just really nice and like denim-y um, which seems to be something I lean to quite a lot with my blues um, quite like a greyish blue and then I think that one would work really nicely with this one which I am so keen on um, lots of really strong red which I love and then some little bits of deep blue um, and this one once I'd sort of dyed it all up and got it dry it just reminds me of very very niche there's a dress that Arwen wears in Return of the King where it's a navy blue body and she's got amazing red sleeves this reminds me of that um, and I just love it I really really like it and so the red and the blue combined would probably go a little bit purpley but not loads so because the blue is really really dark I think it'd just be really good ah, lots and lots of fibre very excited about it all um, so with those most of them will have six braids available so they will be in 100 gram braids so there will be 600 grams available of most colors but a few of them will only have 300 grams available um, because some of them are going to Germany and at some point will be available for making stories um, yeah so at one point I picked off some fluff from one of them because I like to make sure they look nice and neat so I will tell you what's going on there with my strange little basket um, so with each of my braids of fibre when they're dry um, after they've been washed and everything I go and I, I fluff them all up individually to make sure that they're going to be really nice to spin from and I pick off like some bits get sort of caught on other bits when you're rinsing them and things and you get just some areas that like work their way away from the main body of the fibre and they would just be annoying and lumpy and make for not a smooth spinning experience um, so I take them off and usually it's like it's a really small amount from each braid so it doesn't really make much of a difference to the weight you get and most of them are slightly over 100 grams anyway and I save them all up in a little basket because I like a little basket of weirdness um, and so I just so this is from all of these colors uh, that I've just shown you so these are just all of the little pickings off and it's fine wool like it's nice there's nothing wrong with it it's just you, you could throw that away and give it to the birds to use in their nests or put it in the compost or whatever but when you keep it there's enough to actually do something with so we I did the same with all of the previous uh, little scrappy bits from previous batches of skewer blend and I spun some yarn from it and it is unbelievably sludgy and I completely love it um, so I carded this up on my drum carder just all of those little scrappy bits and I made a process of that video nope made a video of that process for my patrons um, and that video is up now it is a really just nice simple chill video with a bit of music no voiceover or anything because I had completely lost my voice at the time I filmed it but it also makes for a nice relaxing viewing experience um, so it's the process from all the fluff in the basket onto the drum carder carding it up preparing it and then spinning it into yarn and it's just so nice and bouncy and squishy and moody really really moody 
which I enjoy. Um, so this will go onto my pile of um, random hand spun that eventually I will do something with. It'll probably make its way into a weaving project or maybe a little knitting project because there is, I think there's about 60 grams here. So we will see. And I've got lots of things leading on from each other because I've got another random little blend of yarn sorry, blend of fibre that I turned into yarn. This was from when I went to visit Wing and Woolwork. And as I was going around, uh, sort of looking at things and feeling them and trying them out, um, lovely Ellie at uh, Wingham was just sort of breaking off little bits for me to feel. And I didn't have pockets, so I was just kind of tucking them into the waistband of my skirt and looked like a complete lunatic by the end of the visit. Um, but it was enough little pieces that I blended them up. Uh, it means that I get no sense of what each one is like to work with as a fibre, um, except for the Herdwick, which I mentioned is in that sample box, because that kind of, in a good way, overpowers everything else, just because it's so mad and kempy and it's got so much character to it. I really love it. So a lot of people will probably balk at blending Herdwick with Superfine Merino, but the Herdwick to me makes the Superfine Merino much nicer because I'm not particularly interested in the like super super soft and I don't really enjoy spinning Merino, but they do have lots of beautiful colours, um, some of which made their way into here. Mostly this is natural colours, but there are some bits of green and pink in here. Um, and this one, the small boy, my son helped me um, blend up on the drum carder and sat on my lap for a bit of the spinning, which is quite nice because he's at a point where he's interested in things and isn't too much of a hindrance. Um, so he was breaking off little bits of fibre for me and it was super. Um, I think that might be enough rambling. Uh, Maybe. I've come to quite an abrupt halt there. No, no, not enough rambling. I need to talk about this because it's lovely. Um, but also I'm slightly annoyed with it because I'm not very good at crochet. Um, I'm trying to do a crochet. And this is, oh look, shouldn't be allowed. Let's put that in there and pretend nothing happened. Um, uh, this is my Mendip DK yarn. This is Night on the Cloudy Base. Um, this is the yarn that was left over from the contrast colour in my Lapidarium, which I wore in my last episode. Um, and my lovely friend Becca, uh, to be adorned, has designed a really beautiful crochet pattern which you can't see very well here because it's in navy yarn, but I will put a picture up if I remember. And I'll also include a link to the pattern because it's a really, really nice one and it definitely is beginner friendly. I'm just, I think I've got myself misaligned somewhere on this last row that I'm doing and so things are turning out a bit wonky. So I might need to go back to the beginning of the row and start again because I made a crochet blanket once, but that was, I'm, I can't remember if it's a single or double crochet, I can't remember which way around the UK and American terms go, but it's the simplest one that's not a slip stitch. Um, and I just went round and round and round and it had increases in the corners and it was all scrappy and great and very little actual thinking. And you don't have to keep track of a stitch pattern because it's just the thing that it is. Um, and so I would like to get a tiny bit better at crochet and it takes a nice pattern like Becca's headband for me to do so. Um, so at some point I will finish this and it'll be very nice. Uh, it will be wider by quite a fair bit and then it has a nice twisty bit that goes at the front which I think is going to be very pretty and will help keep my hair out of the way because I'm still tucking it behind my ears because these front bits are still stupid and short and it annoys me. Um, yes, 
I think that's now all of the things. Um, yeah, so I mentioned that I'll be at Wonderwall. If you are going to Wonderwall, please do come by and say hello. If you are going into Hall 1, which is the one kind of in the middle, um, I'm in the bit on the left, sort of near where all the guilds are and things. Um, if you go round to the left and follow it round, I'm on the sort of opposite side of that bit. And look it up on the hall plan if you're going. It's going to be a really fun event. I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, it's going to be really, really enjoyable. I'm hoping to see lots of lovely people. I will be dyeing more yarn. Uh, well, I'm, I'm constantly dyeing more yarn and more fibre, and I will hopefully have lots and lots of enjoyable things for you. And yeah, I will catch you next time. Hopefully there won't be quite as much of a gap between this one and the next, but we will see how life treats me. And yeah, it's been very nice chatting with you. And until next time, bye bye.